Hello, calculator disassemblers. So, in this episode, we're going to look at a new tool. Um, it's called a long jaw bearing puller. And the reason that I got this, and I got this uh, from Amazon, um, is that when I was trying to take all of these digit wheels off of the small digit wheel shaft, um, this particular one just will not come off. Um, I put a, uh, I put uh, something here, um, a crescent wrench, and I banged on it with a hammer, and it just would not come out like the other ones. Um, I did manage to get a few of them off. So basically, let's take a look at those first. So these basically come in pairs. There is the digit wheel itself, which we saw before, and the, um, I guess, the bearing on which it sits. Um, and in here, let's get really close up here. Okay. So in here, um, we can see that there's a spring and a rod, which um, <laughs> earlier I was calling a detente, which is apparently the the uh, French pronunciation of a completely different word. It's actually a detent. Um, and basically, it's just a rod like this with, uh, with um, a large diameter and then a smaller diameter shaft. And the spring here, this is just loose. Um, it fits around the small diameter shaft, but not the large one. So when you push on it, of course, the spring compresses. And the spring over here has this tail right over here, which prevents it from moving any further. So we just put that in there. And then the small end of the shaft, I'm probably going to have to um, bend this spring a little bit. I think it got a little bit wonky. Um, but the small end of the shaft fits into this notch over here. And uh, basically, um, the small end is not supposed to come out of that notch. Um, it's supposed to be held in place with this wheel, like this. And then it's just supposed to, you know, push in a small amount. So basically the shaft is always held by the notch. Um, and that's pretty much how that works. Um, that's on this side. The digit wheel fits on the bearing basically like this. So it spins pretty freely. Um, obviously I would put some oil on here. Um, but what I did was I cleaned this with, um, it's basically toluene, um, except here in California, you can't get toluene. So you have to get something called, a, I think it's like industrial maintenance cleaning solution or something like that. Um, anyway, so I, um, I basically dunked this in the, uh, so in the, um, I'll, I'll just call it toluene, um, and I took a toothbrush and basically brushed all the grease off of it. Um, before I did that, I did test um, twirling these together and it was really sticky. I mean, really, really sticky. Um, and that's just because the grease had uh, pretty much solidified and you know gotten a lot of dirt in there. Um, so I brushed this, I brushed this, and then you can put them together. And of course it's not lubricated right now, but a little bit of um, sewing machine oil should fix that. So anyway, that's that. So that's the pair. Um, and I managed to get a few of them off, but like I said, this one I couldn't. So I'm going to try this long jaw bearing puller. And the idea is that there's this um, pointy thing and it rotates freely. And the end of the shaft really has to have a divot in it. Um, this one does. Um, if it doesn't, I guess you can put a tiny little divot in there. Um, for this to hold on to. Then, the end of the bearing puller, so I'm just going to rotate this to get this on. Let's see which way does it go. I need to go the other way. There. So the end of the bearing puller holds on to the bearing, and then you rotate this in order to Tighten that up so that it doesn't move there. Okay, so now it's set to go. 
And now all I should have to do is turn the screw. And let's hope that it actually pulls the bearing because I tried with a hammer and it just wouldn't work. So let us tighten this thing. And I'm tightening. And wow, it just moves. It just moves so easily. Wow, that's incredible. To think of the, uh, the time that I spent banging away at this. And it just, it just turns with very little effort and pulls the bearing right off the shaft. And you can see right away, I don't know if you can see like right in there, that there is um, some, I don't know, some sort of a waxy buildup. That's basically the grease. And if you look inside here, there's this discoloration and I'm touching it and it is really, really sticky. Um, and this is interesting because this wheel should be loose and it should be moving. Uh, it's not. So it's effectively glued into place by the, uh, by the grease. So I'm going to remove this and then hopefully in fast forward, we can see all of these get removed as well. So. And obviously, um, it's not going to come off with, um, with hand effort, so I'm just going to have to bang on it. Okay, and let's see. So, uh, at this point, um, we have reached apparently the um, center of the shaft, and um, it looks very different. Um, I am not entirely certain um, what it is, um, whether it just fits right on top. Um, I suspect that, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely certain how this comes off. So, um, so I'm going to have to figure out how that works. So what I did was, um, the thing that I like about this um, bearing puller is that you can actually make it even longer because of these um, holes. Uh, this is about the longest it'll get, though, so um, I can probably pull a few more um, and then uh, I may have to improvise. But in any case, um, I attached the bearing puller to this particular bearing because there was nothing to hold on to over here, and um, it seems to be pulling okay. So um, I guess I'm just going to uh, continue with that. Okay, so here is the central piece. Um, we can see that there is actually a rod. Well, it's actually not, it, it doesn't even have a shaft. So it's just a little thing. Um, and the spring just fits, uh, fits inside this, this hole in there. 
Okay, so we have to be careful about that. And this apparently was made um, out of a pin. Um, you can see on the inside that there's the other end of the pin, which is um, kind of an odd thing compared to the other things. Whoops. Compared to the other uh, thing, which appears to be some sort of a, I don't even know how they made that. So, but apparently they, I don't know. Looks like they knocked it in somehow or pressed it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to immediately put this really tiny piece and the middle piece in the bag so I don't lose it. And here are some more digits. And yeah, we're really getting to the limit of our um, long jaw puller. So let's see if I can just knock these out. Okay, so now it's uh, definitely time, time to improvise because um, I have now completely run out of length and I absolutely need to take this off. Um, these wheels are all, with the exception of this last one, um, these wheels are all pretty damn sticky, so these really have to be removed. Um, there's always the option of taking them off from the other side. Um, but I don't want to do that because that would require the removal of two taper pins and I haven't had much luck with uh, taper pins. I have uh, this idea of using a freezing spray and then heat to maybe loosen it up. Um, and if that doesn't loosen it up, maybe taking a Dremel with, a, uh, with a, uh, an end mill to just, um, um, to just mill the pin down but I don't really want to do that. I really, really don't want to do that because I hate doing that. Um, it's bad enough that I ruined um, one of the digit wheels and had to replace it with a, an awful looking 3D printed version. Um, and by the way, the, um, yeah, the uh, paint didn't come out that well um, in terms of the black. Uh, I guess the uh, best thing to do was probably to um, paint this white and then maybe put a lacquer coat on it and then um, smooth that lacquer coat down. Then I could put the black paint on it and then rub the black paint off. But that didn't work too well, but you know, it's functional. Um, so in any, in any case, um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is just um, making some longer bars for this. I mean, this is just basically, um, it looks like iron or steel or something. Um, I can make one of these, I'm sure. So hopefully after the break, I will have uh, a new set of jaws. Um, I hokeyed up, that's a technical term. I hokeyed up some extensions uh, for these jaws. So they're longer now. Uh, okay, so now I should be able to hopefully if I got this right, I should be able to grab these last few things. Now, if this actually turns out to be too short now, um, if I made this too long, I can, well, I could drill some extra holes here, but um, the uh, this device actually came with a longer um, point 
on the end, which is uh, kind of nice. I mean, this is a really neat um, tool. It's very versatile. So, okay, I guess I am almost there. So let's close these, align this with the end of the shaft. Okay, now it's in the end of the shaft. Great, and now I just need to tighten this part, which may not, it may work. Yeah, it could be better, but it's, uh, it's not that great. It's not very aligned. It's not aligned very well because, um, because this end didn't turn out very symmetrical, but uh, I guess that's okay. So all I have to do is just tighten it and uh, let's see, is it pulling? Indeed it is. So didn't need to be extremely um, precise. I could have done a better job on this side because, um, yeah, you can see that these aren't very symmetrical. Um, so, well, next time I'll do a better job. But uh, for now, for now, we can see that this is, oops, this is working quite well. So I'm going to loosen this now and try to remove this using blunt force. Okay. That's the problem with this thing. I don't have anything to hold on to it at the bottom. So it's just going to keep doing that. Suppose if there were just a tiny little hole in the table, I am not going to drill a hole in the table. Um, I could drill a hole in this. That might be a good idea. Just so that it doesn't move. So, so I need a hole. All right, I will be right back. Actually, I didn't need to come right back because I already have a scrap piece of wood with some kind of hole in it, so that'll work. Let's see if that'll work. It's certainly better. Don't want to lose that pin. Just two more. Let's see if this is going to give me a problem. The second one, I think I'm going to have to raise that. So, this one, is this going to be a problem? No. Uh, oops, <laughs> that was just the shaft moving down. No, it's not going to be a problem anyway. Always a good thing. Okay, the wheel. And the last one. 
the very last one. Let's cross our fingers and hope that this last one is not going to be a pain. Oops, pin came out. Got to watch that. Make sure the spring doesn't come out either. Okay, so we have now removed all of the pieces with the exception of the pieces that are stuck on with taper pins, which I'm going to leave because one, they're not damaged. Um, and two, uh, they're not meant to move. So I don't have to do anything with them. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the shaft because it's kind of sticky. I'm going to clean all of these um, with toluene slash California um, approved industrial um, maintenance cleaner thing. Um, clean the wheels. Then I'm going to put them all back together on the shaft with oil in between each of these. And hopefully the oil will not evaporate quickly. Um, I'm going to be using sewing machine oil. Um, that seems to be uh, a good suggestion. It's kind of lightweight. Um, it's not grease, so it's not going to pick up dirt, um, and it's not going to congeal. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm turning these, and these are kind of sticky. So uh, once I get these cleaned and oiled, they should be good to go. Um, oh yeah, and the final uh, step, of course, is to uh, replace this, um, this uh, wheel that I destroyed. One possibility, of course, is to go get another machine and use that for parts. Um, that would be more authentic. Uh, I hate doing that because that basically means that um, you've basically uh, destroyed a machine in order to fix all the other machines. Um, and I don't really like to do that. I mean, if there's only one thing wrong with it. So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to um, fix the machine with this. Um, maybe I'll uh, put this at one end or the other so that it becomes easy to remove. Um, rather than putting it in the middle, which would be kind of silly. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So next time um, we come back, actually, I think this is probably, this is the second to the last thing that we're going to need to do. Um, the very last thing that we're going to need to do is, of course, remove the large digit wheel, which is having the exact same problem. Um, some of these... Some of these digits move, and some of them do not. So they're likely suffering from exactly the same problem. Actually, all of these digits are moving, except for, looks like two of them. Yeah, so um, yeah, in any case, I am going to have to do the same thing with this. Um, it's going to take a little bit of fiddling to remove this because in order to remove this, I need to remove the middle shaft. And in order to remove the middle shaft, I have to remove some taper pins, which we all hate. So um, until next time, um, this is Rob with the um, Calculator Disassembly Squad saying bye-bye until next time.